So I'm speaking with composer Fernando Velasquez, whose uh, career has given us some amazing memorable and acclaimed scores, uh, with scores such as The Orphanage, uh, Mama, The Impossible, and Crimson Peak. Uh, Fernando has demonstrated his amazing talents as a musical storyteller. Uh, his most uh, recent score sees him continuing his collaboration with director uh, J.A. Bayona uh, with A Monster Calls. Uh, Fernando, thank you so much for uh, speaking. I know it's early for you, but thanks so much for, for mm. <laughs> talking. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, so to start, I would love to ask uh, and talk to you about, I guess, your uh, kind of your background and your, I guess, growing up in your childhood and what kind of led you into music. And then at what point in your life did you decide, you know, I'm going to become a, a film and television composer? Well, I never decided this way. And I cannot remember a moment. I mean, it was always there and I just did it. And so, <laughs> so from from as long as you remember, you've always wanted to 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 be a film composer. Yeah, because um, when I was uh, in in school, for instance, I was always doing music for the plays we would do. Mm-hmm. Um, I was improvising something or recording something with one of these. I mean, you are quite young, so you may not remember these cassette recorders. Oh yeah, I, I remember. Um, <laughs> with with them with the tape and i was just recording some guitar or some something trying experiments and then i was also playing the organ in the church which is in my place is beautiful because people sing a lot in the church and i was improvising there and and um, always i had um, the opportunity uh, to play music with something that was happening always my pleasure and I, i couldn't remember when it happened the first time or when I decided I wanted to do it, I just did it. Yeah. Um, so uh, were you watching a lot of films growing up? Were you listening to other musicians or other composers or were, were you, what kind of were your influences, I guess, when you were younger? Well, just music because music is everywhere. And mm. for instance, if I just, as you spoke, I remembered um, the A-team theme or... <laughs> Or Falcon Crest, you know, on, right. on TV. It's, it's amazing, wonderful pieces of music. And also, for instance, um, all the classical music repertoire, <clears throat> which I was listening at home, but why not um, Alan Parsons or Jazz that, or um, Dire Straits that my brothers were listening, mm-hmm. you know, with the old piece and everything. So I think music is always everywhere in your life and it, it was always there and of course f- films and stories are always there because they um, they are in a way that they are our tools to interpret reality uh, right. as a monster calls shows you know it's about the stories and how important the stories are and well we we always have stories around and now I play to my children um, you know, um, what's the name? Um, Caperucita Roja, you know, the, um, the... Oh, right, yeah, Red Riding Hood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's it. Or Snow White or right. all these things. Absolutely. I don't think we all, we all are into <clears throat> stories and storytelling. And I was just there and I wanted to do it also, you know, not only, um, listening but also telling the stories yeah absolutely and i mean and you're amazing you're such an amazing storyteller and you work with such amazing filmmakers too um so you and you you've built such a you know impressive career over in spain and you know you started composing uh scores for you know uh, american released films have you have you noticed a difference between spanish cinema and american cinema is there a difference at all in terms of maybe i don't know certain tendencies or styles or is it just no difference at all Mostly budget. Budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not only budget. Um, th- th- there may be uh, some differences, but these differences can also happen in Spanish, within Spanish or European mm. films. Right. It's lately, I think you, you, you've noticed, and uh, lately people got afraid of music in films. Mm, yeah. Uh, which is which is completely right because music can be really powerful in films, but now the tendency is 
for me and I think most of people who know about it uh, will agree is temp tracks and and being afraid of melodies. This right. is uh, this is it's just a feature. I wouldn't say it's a problem or it's something bad, but it's is the 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 world we have to live in. And there is a really great point in smaller movies is that you usually are allowed to do more brave things than in expensive movies with a big budget where there is a lot of pressure from executives. I always quote, I don't remember his name, this guy in House of Cards, if you have seen the, the TV series. Right, yeah, with uh, uh, Kevin Spacey. Yeah, but, but they hire, the, the Underwoods hire a writer, a ghost writer, mm -hmm. to write a book about them, uh, if you remember this. Right. And then I remember Frank Underwood is telling him, in the White House, he's telling him, we want something special, something unique, your own voice. And then the guy does this. <laughs> right. And then they get really scared about what he wrote because he's special, unique, and it, it is his own voice. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so then they reject it because it's, oh, no, no, no. But we really wanted you to copy something. <laughs> we didn't want you to do something that is special and, and, and unique. Um, so I think probably me myself I have this this also this um uh what's the name um you know um Jekyll and Mr Hyde that you yeah. want to be <laughs> really special but you really want to be liked and that people feel safe when they listen to your music um so you know uh, the great thing of of smaller movies is that usually they can allow themselves to be as I told, more brave and do something more special, <clears throat> probably had, um, well, and also, of course, it depends on directors who can protect right. their ideas more than than others. If they have a final cut or it's, it's an independent movie and all this. Um, so these usually are the biggest differences. And of course, you know, some directors don't care about music. Mm, yeah that's true yeah there's and <laughs> i think a lot of uh Other, yeah oh sorry go ahead others others are really afraid of music um <clears throat> and i found that it's difficult to work with directors who are afraid of music because um they know that music is very important and it can completely change uh what they did but they are just too afraid of doing it, which I, I, I can understand. But, you know, if you want to be a director, you have to be brave and take decisions. And this is also, again, uh, Barney Stinson in How I Met Your Mother, you know. Um, he's telling Marshall that an executive must be someone brave and, and ready to take really difficult decisions. And then Marshall takes a difficult decision and then Barney tells him, no, no, you have to be ready to take difficult decisions, but never take them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, so this is a little bit what happens. And of course, it's not with all directors or all executives. And, uh, you know, the, the producer of, of, of um, The Orphanage, The Impossible, and A Monster Calls, Belén Atienza. She's a Spanish lady, a uh, young lady, and mm -hmm. she... She is always protecting these difficult decisions and going for them, and it's um, it's great. And you know, it, it depends on every project. I'm just telling you, let's say I'm telling you the difficult side because then the other side is people just, as I was in the in the school, just telling the stories and doing everything that it takes to tell them, which is the really amazing part of what I do. Absolutely. I mean, there's a balance between the business side, of course, and then you have the artistic side. And I think it's, I guess it is a, no, not just for composers, but for directors and cinematographers to find that, you know, you're working within a, an industry. And I think that's yeah. Well, the they put, they, Yeah. Sometimes they put, um, I don't know how many millions yeah. of <laughs> dollars or euros in it. So of course they have something to say and yeah. 
and they, they are addressed i mean they are entitled to be i wouldn't say afraid but to be conservative with the money because it's a lot of money absolutely um, uh, so, so that's why also short films um can be a um great place where to explore and do and of course things change so much lately when you can produce wonderful things at home if you don't need an orchestra you can do wonderful things at home and really amazing scores are done just with you know some synthesizer and yeah really few uh live musicians so right. So looking at your just looking at your approach as a storyteller and not I guess doesn't matter which film you're you're looking at but any film what is the key I guess to to getting the first note uh down on paper or down on the in front of you do you where do you look for inspiration in the film do you uh do you like to read the script beforehand do you just wait till you have the first cut do you look at the characters the scenery I mean what what really is kind of speaks to you the temp track. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure it will. <laughs> no, no. Hopefully, hopefully that is not temp track. And it's funny because where where I'm happier in, I mean, the the movies I'm more happy with usually didn't have a temp track. Mm. And a monster calls. There was a little bit, but it was not a big thing. And we we forgot. We completely forgot about it. Uh, so it was in the impossible. Um, in Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, there was not music at all. So I, it wow. was like a, um, yeah, you, you you never know about this. But um, I I don't like much work into scripts. Um, usually I tell the directors and producers that I'm very bad with scripts. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm bad. Of course I understand the story and and I can tell what it what is it about, but. What it's um, what moves me is movement. So when when I see movement on a screen, then my brain starts thinking mm, movement, and then mm -hmm. it thinks time, and then it thinks music. Um, Interesting. And I'm very very much imp inspired by acting or uh, editing, which is so. For me, it's so determining the so much determining the music itself and the uh, the breed and um, the DNA of the music I will write. So I really, really prefer to start off with the film itself, mm. even if it's in an early stage. Um, and of course, you know. The script must be in the in the movie, but as they say, there is a movie you write, there is a movie you shoot, and there is a movie you cut. So, and I actually do the score to the movie they cut. <laughs> <laughs> if well, they, if they ever if they ever start if they ever stop cutting. Yeah, which, exactly. <laughs> which you you know sometimes they they finish cutting before the release. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, then, and sometimes they keep they just keep going even after the release. Oh yeah, the director's cuts and all the extended cuts. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know this uh, as I told you, it if you compare it to the old times that I nearly didn't ex uh, um experienced things are much different. And but they is the way they are. I mean, it's not that they that this is worse or better. Is that uh, filmmaking? You know, now is offline, and right. they should practically everything from every point of view. So editing is just, you know, I the other day I was lucky enough to have a kind of panel. I mean, it was just a conversation with James Newton Howard. Mm. Uh, for the audience in, in Bilbao and you know I asked them do you think that movies got better the way we, we do them now you know all this offline thing and demos and temp tracks and cuts and reshoot and recut and all these things he, he told me he thinks movies are good or bad the same way they used to be but me being a li probably a little more nostalgic, I think, you know, today it would be so difficult to, to do a Dr. Chivago or Lawrence oh, Arabia or, absolutely. 
the mission or, <laughs> you know, because uh, sometimes to have so many chances just kills um, being brave and going for what you think you have to do. Right. But that's okay. You know, probably uh, as, as James Newton Howard told me, you know, movies are bad or good the same way as, as always right. because it's just a possibility that you have and then you use it or not absolutely um i, I do i will ask you about um you know you you worked on the monster calls with uh j.a bayona and you guys have such a long-lasting collaboration and friendship um working with a director like uh like him what has anything changed from the first time you've worked together to to now or has it kind of stayed the same throughout your your friendship and career or have you developed a shorthand or you know what, what what's the relationship like well it's actually like 15 years of marriage so <laughs> <laughs> An old married no, couple. Uh, it's, yeah yeah well uh, you know it's funny i never thought about it we just do it the same way and probably i'm I know a little bit more about music and a little bit more about filmmaking. So does he, and he's um, uh, um, a, a little busier. Yeah. Because he was preparing things and blah 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 blah. But the thrill for me remains exactly the same, and um, I'm I'm very happy that I I don't know now. I mean I don't know these days. But usually before, uh, he used to tell that the most amazing uh, work experience of his life was um, not working with Naomi Watts or not working with, I don't know whom, uh, but the day we scored his short film because, um, you know, I, <clears throat> I just rang a lot of friends and we did an orchestra. Right. Uh, friends from the Joth Orchestra. It was not professional musicians, <laughs> and we we just joined in a in a hall that I, you know, I did I didn't even hire the hall. It was I just asked for it and they I, they let me record there, <laughs> and there was a big snowfall, so it felt that they they wouldn't make it in time, and then magically like when we were um, ready to record, people popped up and um, he he always say it was a little bit like it's a wonderful it's a wonderful life you know yeah. when they all, <laughs> when they all come in the end so and <laughs> I'm so happy that um, that he remembers this experience because this is exactly what it's for me I know you know in in in, in big films can things can get really um, professional and serious and you know, when, whenever I go to a big place to record, like London and all these places, I'm I'm so glad that the, um, the guys there tell us, I mean, not only me, but the people I work with, my friends. Right. Uh, they tell us that it's kind of um, very nice for them that we, we enjoy so much what we are doing. And... Uh, but we do because to have an orchestra for me is like, you know, it's like Christmas and my birthday together. <laughs> right. And well, and to, to have them playing music I wrote, you know, I, I probably do this. Uh, last year we did it eight times in different productions with big orchestra, eight different scores. Well, it is still, it 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 is still really, really, really exciting for me. It's like, uh, you know, like like Christmas morning and opening the, <laughs> the the gifts. Um, so so I think it's the same for Juan Antonio, and and also other or the other directors I work with. And this is really, uh, it 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 is magical for me. And you know, this is the magic I like, and nobody is spoiling this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So for uh, now, with your recent film with uh, Monster Calls, it's such a, an amazing uh, story. It's so emotional and intimate, and and, and so, you know, fantastical and creative. What, what when you sat down to to look at this film for the first time, uh, what what did you think the music needed, or what did the film needed musically? What were the goals that you kind of set out when you talked with Juan Antonio and and kind of developed kind of the starting point? What was your approach for the film? Mm. 
I don't remember if this was conscience and uh, or and if we spoke about it directly, but um, we knew we didn't want to do the impossible too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the 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 um, second part of the impossible. What I mean is, the impossible was really emotional and really intense. Right. And 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 this was on purpose, and this is what we wanted to do in the impossible. Uh, but this year was completely different, completely different, because here um, feelings are deeper. I mean, not deeper, but feelings are um, they don't take time in a very sh- uh, they don't take place in a short time. They, you know, it's a long story and the mother is ill from long time. So it's a slow burner, if you if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. Uh, where, Whereas in the impossible, it, everything was sudden in in three days and really huge thing. And in the monster calls, what happens is happening right now. And probably we've got some friend that is going through this. So it's completely the approach in terms of emotion was completely, completely different. And of course, the movie is different. So. Um, as I told you, probably not consciously, but we went to the opposite, which is um, music will be there only when it's really needed and when it means something really deep and which the biggest respect to what is happening. Not that we didn't do this in the impossible because we did, but here is completely different because things are really small and the catastrophe it's not a catastrophe, it's life. And it, right. as I told you, it's something that is happening right now to someone we know. Mm. So um, we tried music and music and music, and we decided that the best music was most of the times no music, mm. uh, which which is also a decision that you have to take. It's not, uh, you know, this is not given. You have to try and, and look for it. <clears throat> and yeah, this was... And as we did in in the orphanage and the impossible, um, we look for a theme that would work, um, not in a specific place of the movie, but that would uh, summarize the movie. Mm. Uh, so we have this theme in the end of the movie. If you remember, there is a little. Uh, have you seen the movie? Uh, I haven't seen the monster calls yet. No. Ah, okay. Okay. So um, whenever you you see it, there is an epilogue. I don't want to do any spoiler. Right. Yeah, no spoilers. <laughs> um, there is a little there is a little epilogue, and then the the theme starts there. If if you if you got the music, I think it's called end credits or something. But isn't this is not end credits because it overlaps the end of the movie and then the the credits, and it is there. You have the whole theme. It's like the impossible theme. Like the orphanage theme, right, right. Uh, we have a theme that has three different, um, three different parts that we used in the movie in a different in in different ways. Uh, so all the material came from this theme. That was the first thing we composed, wow. and it's fun because it, this time I think it was the second theme I wrote. In the impossible, I think it was the. If I remember, probably the fifteenth, and in the orphanage, right? Like what's like twenty sixth. Wow. So you know, I, <laughs> we improve improve the ratio. And, <laughs> and, but you know, whatever. Um, then, then of course, even when when the theme was written, it took ages to to do the 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 rest of the score. And as I told you, trying many things. And mostly loosen things. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 important to I think one of the greatest strengths of a composer is to know when, or, and of any filmmaker is to know when you don't need music, and it, it makes the, I think the music a lot more powerful when, yeah, when it yeah. does come in, especially for you know a very intimate and close story like like this one. Um, but you, I mean, you've worked in so many different genres in your career. You've done a lot of great uh, horror uh, scores too, which I really love. And you worked with Guillermo del Toro. Crimson Peak and with Mama and the Orphanage. Uh, is there any? I, I know horror is a very, to me, I feel like it's a, a tricky genre to to navigate. But you find a way to make your scores. I don't know. I love the way you, you approach like horror. It's not it's not terrifying music, but it's very 
uh, emotional. I mean, what what is in your in your opinion is the a key to a good horror score? Uh, just what you said. Yeah, just key <laughs> focus on the emotion. <laughs> Done. <laughs> because because uh, you know if you see what's it what's it where, where they kill cows so a we can eat them slaughterhouse yeah slaughterhouse yeah. you you see that what they do and of course it's kind of gore but why you know it's okay what they do because you want to eat the meat right. and you are not in love with the cow right so so you don't care about the cow do you i mean i don't care about them. of course they are beautiful animals and yeah. don't, don't take me wrong but the what that but, one cow you're not personally involved with yeah that's it, that's it. To I personally attached it. Yeah. I, I, and, and I always quote the, the amazing, um, well, maybe I'm, I'm uh, how do you say this, sticking my neck here. I mean, it may, maybe right this now. is a little a little risky what I'm telling. But, you know, Up, the movie. Yes, yeah. The Up, it's a wonderful movie. But what makes it really, really amazing is the beginning. You know, the story afterwards it's just okay when they go to the uh, falls and right. they fly and the dog that speaks and blah, blah, blah. You know, this is really okay. But it, it you wouldn't care at all if the beginning, if the, this montage sequence in the beginning wasn't so unbelievable, amazing. Yeah. You, yeah. I, I think you you remember, everyone remembers Oh, yeah, this. of course. It's Peter uh, and Michael Giacchino's married, score, yeah. Yeah, married life or married couple. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember the, the precise name of the of the queue. This is just unbelievable, and you are so much in love with them that then even if they, you know, uh, miss the bus, you are sorry for them. Right. So, exactly. So, so um, it's the same with 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 uh, horror movies. If you care about what is happening. Um, then even the smallest thing affects you. Mm, absolutely. So, and 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 I, I think that's why um, Mama works. I think that's why uh, the Sixth Sense works. Is works is because you care about him. Oh yeah. Because of the, because you know you like him and you just you you think poor guy, in and mostly, I mean apart from really strong like Evil Dead and all these things, right. you know these things are just scary because they are really gore and yeah and kind of even physical um but all the other horror movies at work they are not really horror movies they are dramas mm. and then you really care about them and that's why you are terrified that something is happening to them and um i'm sure we could oh yeah we, we could <laughs> we could find a lot so many examples of really terrifying things that work because you care about them because you like them or because you are um you know attached to the right. people in the movie absolutely um well i i fernando i want to thank you so much for for speaking to tonight uh, and for you in the morning and, and uh, for, for for getting us to get inside your head a little i'm, I'm such a huge fan of yours uh uh but bef i know bef before we go though i do want to ask maybe you can talk about it maybe you can't i know your 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 friend there, uh uh jay bayona is directing the next jurassic world is there any chance we might hear a fernando velasquez jurassic world 2 score <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just curious if you heard about a movie called Zipi Zape y la Isla del Capitan, because this is a score I did this year. Uh, it's a Spanish movie. And, um, uh, you know, it, it was released in summer and then it didn't do as well as we thought as we thought it might uh -huh. and it's a score I'm so proud of and um, it's kind of strange that no one knows about it yeah so I'm just I'm just taking my chance to tell you because probably you've heard about this Guernica uh, because it's a bigger subject right right or, or Pride and Prejudice and Zombies but this Zipi Zape you know is as I think as I told you is it is one of these um, scores or movies that we we don't hear that often anymore because it's big orchestral melodies themes that you might remember a little bit like a jurassic world or star wars thing should be 
right. and I'm very proud of it. So I hope you can um, you can take um, a while and listen to it. I think it's it, it's available in Spotify. I, I'm such. I mean, just your work, your whole body of work has always uh, resonated with me, and and your music has uh, enhanced all the films that you've worked on. So I just wanted to thank you for thank keep, you so much for, for keep thank doing you. what you do, and 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 such a pleasure to chat with you tonight. Same here. Thank you so much.